You f***ed up because you boosted your car without the proper equipment. What's going on guys? Jels from Fitman Industries and today on this episode of The Build Sheet, we are going to be talking about mods needed to boost your car. Now when you go into taking a naturally aspirated engine and trying to add either a turbocharger or a supercharger or any kind of boost into the engine, you're going to run into a few things that you might not think about right off the top. And it could be little things and it could be big things that you just overlook. So in today's episode of The Build Sheet, we're going to be going over mods needed to boost your car. Now before we get into it, don't forget to subscribe, hit the bell button so you get notified when we upload next. And this month's giveaway, as you know, we're doing a clutch wheel giveaway for the month of May. Easiest way to enter is to pick up one of these shirts at fitmentindustries.com. Check out all the rules in the link in the description below. But let's get into it. So before you even think about trying to get more power out of your engine, make sure that everything is like good with your engine. Actually, just make sure that everything is good with your whole car. It's like the general rule of thumb when modifying your car, and that's to make sure that all the maintenance is done first. And I know it sounds kind of boring, but trust me, it's gonna help in the long run. The last thing that you want is to have a fast car that has weak suspension, leaks oil, and makes a bunch of other strange noises as it goes down the road. Not only that, but having a maintained car going into things such as boosting can raise other issues down the line that are going to have to be resolved anyway. So you might as well get it taken care of beforehand. So after you make everything right with your car, all the oil leaks are tracked down and fixed, there are no more check engine lights on, everything's working properly, the next step would be to do your research on your specific engine and do as much as physically possible. Find out things that you never thought you wanted to know about your car or your engine. The truth is, some engines are going to be an absolute pain in the ass to boost. You're gonna to wanna to find out how much boost it can handle if you're going to need to upgrade your internals and look for any other issues that people ran into while boosting their car. Forums are an absolutely fantastic source for this kind of information and if you want a video showing you exactly what to do, there's more than likely a YouTube video out there to do it. Research, research, Research. I can honestly not stress it enough. There is nothing worse than diving headfirst into a project and running into issue after issue and maybe eventually causing more damage than anything else. Kind of like going to install coilovers on a Focus ST and thinking you have to remove your windshield wipers, remove some of the plastic pieces out of the way, but you didn't research how to remove the windshield wipers, so you just went at it and you managed to crank your windshield in the process and then come to find out you never even had to remove the windshield wipers in the first place. <coughs> Dakota. So do some research. It will save you time and money and more than likely your engine in the end. So the next step and first actual mod of the list would be to pick out what you're going to boost your car with. Is it going to be a turbocharger or are you going with a supercharger? Today there are a lot of aftermarket companies out there that will make either a complete turbo or supercharger kit for your vehicle. These kits will include pretty much everything to add a turbo or supercharger to your car. The key word there being add. These kits normally include a turbo, an intercooler with all the necessary piping, a turbo manifold, some exhaust pieces, oil lines, and if you're lucky, they may throw in an oil pan with a pre-welded bung. So everything you need to attach a turbo or supercharger to your car. Now, if that was everything that needed to be done to turbo a car, that would be it and I wouldn't be here doing this video. So with that being said, there's still a little more that goes into it. One thing that you're gonna to wanna to keep in mind is the possibility of having to upgrade your fuel system, mainly your fuel pump and injectors for the most part. With more air being compressed and forced into the engine, it also calls for more fuel, which your OEM fuel system may not be rated for. This comes back to the research that you hopefully did beforehand, like I mentioned, to find out what size fuel pump and injectors you should go with, depending on your setup. The next thing you're gonna to wanna to throw on the car would be a free free-flowing exhaust. Now most turbo applications perform a lot better with a free-flowing exhaust. It allows for a lot better tuning, you get a lot more power out of it. Typically three inch is the standard for any turbo application. If you're lucky enough to find a three inch system for your car, then great. But sometimes it may come down to having to build your own or have a fab shop build one for you, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. It may cost a little more in the long run, but whenever you get a custom exhaust made, it opens up a lot of possibilities for some cool things. Maybe you want to do something along the lines of a hood or bumper exit, or maybe you want to just go with something completely unique. 
The next big thing that is going to be needed when boosting your car is going to be an ECU that is capable of being tuned. Some newer cars, fortunately, like the FRS or BRZ, can be tuned using the stock ECU because they are writable by access to the OBD port. However, older cars like Civics or 428 Eclipses are not so easy. Usually you'll have to purchase a third-party ECU, a piggyback system, or even a standalone unit that is able to be flashed or programmed to accept the tune suitable for the boosted application. You may even be able to get away with a mechanical system such as a fuel management unit, but either way, you are going to have to adjust the fuel to compensate the increased amount of air being brought into your engine. And if you think that you can get away with boosting your car without having to deal with tuning of some sort, I got some bad news for you. With more power comes more heat, which requires more cooling, and our engines would prefer to stay as cool as possible. Upgrading your cooling systems are going to be another must when looking at boosting your car. It'd be a great idea to look at an upgraded radiator and maybe even some slim mount electric fans to keep everything cool. Now, depending on the extent that you're going with your build, you may even want to think about relocating your entire cooling system completely. Rear mounted radiators can ensure that no latent heat from the engine bay will soak into the radiator. Now, of course, that comes with an extensive amount of fabrication to achieve a setup like that, but if you're looking to make a lot of power, it's better to ensure that everything stays cool, and that's one way to go about it. This next modification is somewhat of a controversial topic, I guess I would say, on whether or not you actually need one, but adding a catch can to your system is never a bad idea. It is argued that they are not a necessary modification, but if you're looking at doing a build with a high amount of boost, you are increasing the chances of blow-by in your engine. By adding a catch can to your system, you can eliminate a large amount of oil vapor that would be recirculated into the intake of your engine. All in all, there are a lot of things that go into taking a naturally aspirated engine and turning it into a boosted platform. You're going to have to change a lot of things and adjust things that you probably would have never guessed going into it. Other things to keep in mind would be upgrading your clutch to handle the extra horsepower that you'll be cranking out, brakes to help you stop, rear axles and your FRS because the OEM ones are made of glass, other small things such as smart plugs, gauges to help monitor all the things you need to monitor now, and new wheels and tires for fitmentindustries.com. So when it comes down to it, boosting a naturally aspirated car is totally worth it. As long as you take the time to do the research and save up for some quality parts, it should go fairly smoothly. So if you have been thinking about boosting your car or halfway through the process stuck on where to go because you can't get your engine to run, hopefully this helped out a little bit. So go ahead and let us know your thoughts down in the comments below and whether or not you've taken a naturally aspirated car and made it into a boosted car. I'm Jealous from Fitment Industries. Don't forget to subscribe, wheels, tire suspension, fitmentindustries.com. Don't forget the clutch giveaway that we're doing for the month of May. Easiest way to enter is to head over to fitmentindustries.com, pick up the shirt, get entered to win, free set of wheels. I'm Jells. We'll see you later. Peace.